Totalitarianism. The Honourable Cherie Brownlee. Mr Speaker, that was a ramble from one of the central figures in the so-called media-proposed coalition of the losers. There was a time when Winston Peters would have come into this House and delivered a speech totally off the cuff and not had to stand there, somewhat sadly protesting that he had written the speech himself and then self-nominating himself as a moron. Mr Speaker, I think that was an appalling speech and it totally misunderstands the modern nature of the New Zealand economy and the opportunities that we need to take in order to deliver to the friends that he has in great power. So here's a man who's telling us about people flocking to his meetings, great power members flocking to his meetings, all held in telephone boxes, seven or eight people crammed in there sitting at Guinness Book of Records, new, uh, new status, as they listen to Winston Peters. Well, what he doesn't tell them is that in the nine years that he supported a Labour government, they got very little increase in their income. In just four years, just four years under National, the married super going up by $200 a fortnight, $100 a week, $5,000 a year. That's what great our members really understand about the current government. So smarten up the message and the member might have a chance of being that central figure, but it'll still be a coalition of the losers. Mr Speaker, today is a great day of celebration here in Wellington and throughout the country as we are going to witness the premiere of The Hobbit uh, directed by Peter Jackson. What a great occasion it is where the whole world is going to look in on New Zealand and to see the work of the creative genius Peter Jackson but also of the 3,000 New Zealanders who worked on that production, who are involved in the creative industry, who would not have had that work had Labor been the government. Mr Speaker, let's make no bones about it. If you go back, sir, to 2010, when the movie was being proposed, Mr Simon Witt, a, an Australian unionist, came to town riding roughshod over everybody getting the unions in the United States to back him, and they backed off him in the end because they thought he was so extreme, telling them that unless that was a unionised uh, picture, and those contractors who work on it, hard-working creators who do struggle from time to time to get work and wanted the long tenure that these three films have been able to provide them, would not have a job unless they joined his Australian union. And who backed him? Who backed him? The Labor Party. The Labor Party back them. Did they care where this bill might be made? No. No, they don't. But I want to know if the Premier today had been held in Edinburgh, or if the Premier today had been held in London, would Grant Robertson have gone? Would David Shearer have gone? Would Annette Kick have gone? Oh, she's not. Of course she would. Off any Western, Eastern Bloc country with a big red flag would be a place that that woman would be happy. <laughs> now, can I say that uh, I think it's great that they've finally seen the light and that they will attend that premiere tonight and will celebrate along with the many creatives who are responsible for producing that great work. But it does smack of a party so bereft of ideas that when something they propose goes wrong, they suddenly grab a flag and get in front of the parade that's going the other way. That's David Shearer, and he's no better than any of the other Davids. And I want to give the House a bit of a prediction this afternoon. Here's a bit of a, uh, a, a, a prediction this afternoon. Once they get to the realisation that they can't get a real leader from the three Davids, they're bound to go for a Clayton. That's my prediction. The leader you get when you haven't got a leader. Mr Speaker, the central figure uh, in this whole sad, sorry saga were the unions. And you look sir, at the Labour Party conference in the last couple of weeks, that party has now formally, or even more formally, cosied up and handed over their whole political agenda to the union movement. Mr Speaker, it is a sad day for this country when a political party that should be free and open to new ideas locks itself up so much with an ideology that is about yesterday's world, about having shop floor rules for every job that goes, 
uh, and, and Sir ends up in a position where they can't offer a reasonable economic policy, nor, sir, can they count. The Honourable Annette King. Thank you, Mr Speaker. That speech reminded me of something that John Key said this week. He said that